Strawberry crops are a billion dollar industry. Yes, you heard me right. A billion with the capital B. Honeybees are essential in sustaining this important industry with assisted pollination. Therefore, any threat to this intimate relationship is a reason for concern. Beekeepers are worried about the constant high colony losses while pollinating blueberry crops. Blueberry growers are concerned about not having beekeepers willing to pollinate blueberry crops anymore. And I, a consumer, am concerned if I will still have my blueberries in my breakfast that I love so much. In my consulting business, beekeepers constantly report strange things in blueberry crops. Weird brood patterns, heavy colony losses, honeybee eggs that don't develop it, and much, much more. However, one constant complaint is the increased infection of European fall brood, a dangerous bacterial disease. And beekeepers are certain the cause of the increased infection rates is the fungicide used by blueberry growers. Hi, I'm Dr. Umberto Valcristiani, and in this video, I will discuss this problem with you and show you an interesting research article that illustrates well, in my opinion, the problem with pesticides. This video is brought to you by Project APSM. More about them later in this video. Honeybee pollination is crucial to blueberry production in North America. Growers of pollinator-dependent crops may use synthetic chemicals to reduce crop losses from pests, but these chemicals can be hazards to the same honeybee required to pollinate this crop. Balancing these competing needs has been termed Integrated Pest and Pollinator Management IPPM. This system required information on the costs and benefits of different approaches to pest management and the implications for pollinators and crop yield. European fault brood occurs when the gram positive bacterium Melisococcus plutonius colonizes the meat gut of honeybee larvae and outcompetes the larvae for nutrition. European fault brood often emerge in honeybee colonies when under stress. For example, in the early spring, when nurse bees populations are low and pollen and nectar resources are scarce, the colonist brood might suffer from inadequate care and feeding, predisposing them to European fault brood infection. The two main problems in blueberry fields are anthracnose and Botrytis fruit rot, two devastating fungal diseases. And unfortunately, fungicides are widely used in blueberry production to prevent these diseases. Today, beekeepers know for a fact that blueberry pollination is very risky. The damage reported by beekeepers coming back from this pollination service is severe. And because of this, blueberry growers are facing a shortage of pollination services, which could put blueberry consumers, like me, at risk. So how can we make this work? How can we safely send bees to blueberry fields and ensure they return healthy? In January of 2023, Dr. Wood and her collaborators, funded by Project APSM, tested the hypothesis using in vitro infection models on whether or not Fungicides are implicated in the increased European fall brood infection observed by beekeepers. Honeybee larvae raised in controlled laboratory conditions were chronically exposed to environmental levels of commonly used blueberry fungicides and then infected with European fall brood bacteria. And the results for sure will surprise you. Larvae were grafted from honeybee colonies and transferred to petri dishes. Two groups were created the control group and the experimental group. The control group received a diet containing all the necessary nutrients for the larvae to grow properly. Meanwhile, the experimental group received the same nutrition diet but with the addition of the fungicide. In the next step, the researchers infected the larvae with European fault brood bacteria to see if the fungicide would help the bacteria or not. However, because grafting is a delicate procedure that can damage the larvae, the control and experimental group must be split in two to control for these variables. The larvae were then incubated at 35 Celsius degree and 94% relative humidity for a couple of days, receiving the different diets for proper growth with or without the fungicides. At the end of the day six, the experiment was terminated to measure the difference among those groups. 
Lot of exposure to medium and high concentration of Kinja without bacterial infection significantly decreased larval survival compared to the grafted group by 16.7 to 83.4% respectively, showing a direct detrimental effect of the fungicide on normal larvae development using these doses. All other fungicides did not affect the survivorship of the honeybee larvae in any concentration. However, when you look at the larva infected with European fall brood and exposed to the median and high concentration of Captain, the high concentration of Luna, and the low and high concentrations of Switch, these larvae experienced a significant increase in survivorship compared with infected control larvae. Yes, you heard me right. If this study is correct, the fungicide helped the honeybee against the bacterial infection. Mind blowing. Do you want more? Here is more. Larval exposure to combination of two or three fungicide did not negatively affect the survivor relative to grafted control. In contrast, larvae infected with the bacteria and exposed to combination of either Captain and Luna or Captain Kenjin and Luna had significant 25.1 and 26.3% increases in larva survival compared with infected control group. The combination of some fungicides helped the honeybees even more against the bacterial infection. Now, if you really want to blow your mind, it helped with one fungicide, it helped with two fungicides, but what could happen if they tested four of them combined? Well, in this case, the larval survival was significantly decreased by exposure to low concentration of four fungicidal products simultaneously. Yes, you heard me right again. In this case, combined with bacterial infection, exposure to four fungicide products resulted in a significant 24.2% decrease in larval survival compared with infected control larvae. Apparently, instead of aiding, as the other results showed, the combination of four pesticides combined, for whatever reason, had a detrimental effect on honeybee larvae. That's crazy. Please check it out the article and let me know your thoughts. I probably need some help to understand this. To me, this is the perfect example to illustrate my problem with pesticides in general and why I'm always skeptical about pesticide use. I perfectly understand the current needs of pesticides right now growing food the way we do, but I don't think this is the best we can do as Homo sapiens considering we want to keep the sapiens part of the name of our species. We develop a chemical to eliminate a species from this planet and put it out there in high quantities with almost zero information about the potential interactions this chemical would have with other species, including us. Yes, we have some positive results demonstrating the efficacy of the chemical against the target, but it is clear that the regulatory process cannot measure everything to guarantee our safety and the safety of our environment. There is no way around it. It is impossible. And I don't even think it is the regulatory process fault. It is too much work and resources to deeply investigate the consequences of the release of these chemicals out there. I invited Dr. Wood for a live stream on my channel to talk about her research. The live stream is free to everybody as always, and it's scheduled for Thursday, March 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Please register to the event using the link in the description of this video. The use of pesticides in our agricultural system is a necessary evil for now. As you can see, many different scenarios can happen depending on the conditions using these chemicals. We need much more research to advance our understanding of how this chemical works and ensure they can be used safely. That's why I appreciate very much Project APCM work funding research like this. Research money for pesticide work is very rare and I'm very pleased to see a non-profit organization funding this kind of research. Such investigations are essential for facilitating constructive conversations to discover ways to keep our bees healthy and our agro-system working for us rather than against us. Please visit Project APCM website to know more about what they're doing. A big shout out to my high tier Patreons and thanking you for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show of all beasts. See you guys next week.